Hey, it's Ron Trucks again with BusinessAtlas.com. Let's get started with this lesson. I want to talk about good record keeping. And if you'll notice, I said record keeping, not bookkeeping. We've covered a lot of material in this course, and most of it has focused either directly or indirectly on bookkeeping. But remember, there's more paperwork to a company than just the bookkeeping trail. There are a lot of other records, too. It's important that, as you're working through setting up or organizing your bookkeeping, you think about all the records that come with running a company. Even if you try to get as much as you can set up electronically, there are records. Sometimes paper, sometimes electronic. Honestly, sometimes it feels like there's enough paperwork in a small business to start your own library. So one of the challenges for small business owners or small business managers or small business employees is the need to keep everything organized, not just financial records. If there's more than just one of you, usually the person or the team that coordinates bookkeeping is a pretty good choice to oversee the other records too. And when we talk about those other records, here are some of those things that we're talking about, maybe some good ways to divide the paperwork up. There are contracts, correspondences, Employee records. There is a file that we call a frequently used forms file or a master file. And those are things that you may need to make copies of to use in your business, but you want to keep a good, clean master copy in your file. There could be permits and licenses, tax records, and a lot of other things. One of the things that I've watched happen quite a bit is as an organization grows and we get more specialized teams or departments involved in running the business, a lot of those pieces will shift off to the other departments. For example, you may grow to the point where you have a human resources department. They'll handle the employee records. But until you get to that point, let's take a few minutes and assume it's only you or maybe a really small team and talk about how we handle records. First, let's deal with bookkeeping paperwork. You're going to need to set up a filing system. In that filing system, I'd recommend starting with three major big categories. First one is income files. You need to keep copies of customer invoices or sales receipts. You'll also need to keep copies of credit card payment receipts. If your client purchases something on credit card and they sign the receipt, you need to keep that on file. You may also keep copies of your customer's purchase orders that they send to you to order items. As we know, anytime we have income, the other side is expense. So there's going to be some expense paperwork. You'll want to keep track of bills and invoices that you either need to pay or that you've already paid. When you purchase items, you may receive a receipt of goods statement or a packing slip. You're going to want to keep those organized. When you file your paperwork for the expenses, there's usually two different approaches. You can either file them by the vendor name. If you buy from XYZ vendor, all of their bills, all their statements, all of their invoices are in one folder. Or I've seen clients set up their filing system based on their chart of accounts. So they may have a folder in their filing cabinet for utilities, another one for rent, another one for advertising. And a lot of times it may be somewhat of a mix for both. The trick here is not to overthink it too much, but make sure and set up a system that you understand and that you can work through to find the things that you need to find. If you're purchasing things using credit cards, whether it's your own personal credit card or whether it's a company credit card, you're going to receive credit card statements from the credit card companies. You've got to find a place to file those. If you have an American Express card and a MasterCard, and maybe even a second MasterCard, create a different folder for each one of those and just keep them in order by date. The third major area that I recommend that we set up record keeping for are bank records so that you keep copies of your deposit slips when you make a deposit at the bank. You keep copy of your bank statements and your reconciliation reports from every month when you go through and reconcile those bank statements. Another thing to think about is if you accept payment by credit cards from your customers, you're going to receive merchant services statements and correspondences from the credit card companies. This needs to be kept in a separate file, along with the fact that your customers are probably going to be signing credit card receipts, and you need to keep those on file with the approval signatures in case there's any questions about the purchases. A question that I get asked quite a bit is, how long do I need to keep these records? And just so you know, what we're talking about here is called record retention. And honestly, that could be an entire course in itself. It may be someday. My best answer on that is, first realize that you need to set up what we call annual files versus permanent files. What do I mean by annual files versus permanent files? 
There's some paperwork you're going to file that you really need to file on an annual basis. All of your electric bills for this year. All of your invoices from your vendors for this year. And at the end of the year, once you're done wrapping up your books for this year, you can take those and put those in a box and store them somewhere. On the other hand, you're going to need some permanent files. Some things that stay in the filing cabinet from year to year. Could perhaps be a copy of your lease. Could be your employee files. Some stuff like that. So keep in mind annual files versus permanent files. Back to record retention. As I mentioned, I'm not going to go into it too in depth in this course. But keep in mind that it varies by what type of record we're talking about. Employee records need to be held for a different length of time than credit card receipts that your clients or your customers have signed. My best suggestion is two things. One, get advice from a professional, your tax advisor, your CPA. The other thing that I would say is there are some good resources out on the internet based on your type of industry, because some of this is going to be based on what type of business you're in. At bare minimum, I would recommend that you're better safe than sorry. And I would recommend holding everything for at least seven years. Now, when I say holding on to things, go back to what we talked about on annual files versus permanent files. At the end of every year, you've got some information that you don't need to be filling up your filing cabinets with. So you're going to file those away in some boxes. Piece of advice for you, label the outside of the boxes. Put on the outside of the box what is in there. Not every single item, but just categories. And that applies whether you're storing it off-site in a storage area or with a storage company or just in your basement. It's going to make it easier to find things. Another thing that I would recommend along with that is create a catalog of what's in each of the boxes and keep a copy of that catalog in your office. If box one has certain items in them, then make sure that you keep a written record of that in your office. So if you say, oh, I need to go find a piece of paper, you look at your catalog, you figure out what box it is, you go find it in storage. Just makes life a little bit easier. Okay, so that's some general thoughts about record keeping. Summarize it up. The smaller you are, the more that falls on your shoulders. The bigger you are, the more you can spread that out to your teams or your departments. But it's really important to set the expectations of what you expect all of those different groups to do. It just helps you stay running better as a business overall. Thanks for checking out this lesson. We have lots more information and other videos on our channel. Check them out or hit subscribe to find out more.